Hey everyone, it's Cheryl from the Tinker's Cart and I thought we would paint a few little sunset paintings this morning. Actually, it's afternoon now. But anyways, I've got some cute little canvases here and um, they're these little minis that I painted before and this is a little five by seven. And it's really fun and quick and easy. So let me give you a better view of these little guys and we will start painting. I'm using just a few colors today. I've got my primary yellow. Of course, I've got black and white. I have um, a phthalo blue or an ultramarine blue, whatever you might have. A couple of shades of orange, which you can certainly mix yourself as well if you wanted. And it's a teal. I'm going to do a teal sky today. I know you've seen me paint these little uh, canvases, which are great. Um, I get them in little packages from Michael's and little packages of the easels as well. And they're really adorable when they're done and, and take just a few minutes. You could paint, line up a bunch of them and paint them all at once. But I thought I would do the five by seven as well. So you might be able to see a little better um, how I'm gonna do that for you. All right, so let's just start with the five by seven here. I'm going to just take a little bit, I'm gonna do um, my sky in kind of a teal color. But I'm going to start the sunset down here. So I'm going to just make a little line where my horizon is going to be, maybe right about there. And that is just going to slowly work into some yellows. I'm working while the paint is wet, wet on wet. And look at how nicely it blends for you pretty easily. Dry off my brush. I have a little bit too much orange. Let me pull over my palette and everything here so you can see the colors and the painting as it goes. Okay, so I'm just drawing off the extra orange. I'm taking a little more yellow and a little bit of white. Sometimes white makes the transition into the darker color for the sky a little easier. If you went right with your blue right here, you're going to get more of a green tone. So I'm going to dry off my brush and almost use some white as a buffer in between there. I'm going to just take some white and go right on top of that line. Just so when we get into that teal color, it's not going to look green too much. So I'm just going to rinse that off. I'm going to get that water out of my brush. I'm going to start with this teal. This is the color I'm going to use for my sky. I'm going to use this really fun teal. I've been in a teal and pink phase lately. And so let me just mix in some white as I go because I don't want it quite that dark. You could blend this out as much as you'd like. Nice smooth uh, teal sky or you can leave it with some lights and darks which I'm going to do. Getting a little lighter down here where we're going to meet. I'm going to go right up against that. I'm not going to really go into that color yet. Why I'm going to do this, I'll show you in a sec. I'm just going to go with the, the teal right up there. Now I'll just take a little dry brush and soften that together. That's going to prevent me from getting really the wrong color in my sky. I've just got two colors meeting, and I've just used a dry brush there to connect them. That's where I, we're going to do our water next. But I just wanted to show you on the little bigger uh, canvas, but look at how much fun it'll be on this little guy. I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to paint a little bit of an orange line where I want my horizon line, just to start. And you know, I completely skipped. I guess I don't even really need to go into that um, light orange I have on my palette. We're just going to use the primary orange there into some yellow. Then we get that lighter shade of orange. And it's just working quickly like this, wet and wet, you get such a nice blend. You don't have to struggle. It's, a, it's an acrylic paint, of course but it acts a little more like an oil if we can work quickly with wet and wet. Okay, I'm gonna go into my white now and get that lighter shade of yellow on the top here. If I lose my white because the color is strong, I'll just clean my brush off. I'm gonna go into the white, but I wanna make sure I have a clean brush and I wanna make sure the water is all off of that brush too. So just a little bit more white just to make that barrier into the teal a little easier. Now I'll go, and actually I'm going to take, my big brush has the teal on it already, so we'll just go ahead with the teal here. Right into the sky. These little guys are a little wrapped canvas, so you can just paint your edges as you go if you wish. I'm going to go almost down to where that white is. I'm going to add a little white in my sky. I like it when it's a little lighter and darker, like I showed you a minute ago. And now we'll just use that same dry brush to blend. So I'm just going to blend those together like this. It's a nice little sunset sky as well. Okay, so we've got the sky done. Easy peasy, right? Didn't take long. And now um, 
I'm going to go into the water. So let me move on. I'm going to move everything over because I feel like you've got too much of me on the on the screen there. Let's move me over, and that way you can really see what I'm painting here. Okay. When this dries, we're going to put a little bit... Um, no, I think we'll leave it like that. I think it's fine like that. I was going to maybe put a little bit of a moon in there, or, or uh, well, the sun would be setting, might not be the moon there. Anyway, let's do the water. I'm going to do it pretty quickly using a variety of colors as well. I'm going to move this over so I can get some other sheet sheet over there. Oh, I did put a little, no, I did put a little sunset there, a little um, sun setting, so we'll do that. My screen was black in my sample. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use some same colors in the water, and I do like, I really love this flat um, brush because the chisel, I can put on color wide strokes, and then I can use the chisel edge to make some little strokes. So I'm going to, I'm going to fill in, I'm just going to use back and forth strokes here with that teal, in the middle. I'm going to do the same thing with the bigger canvas, but I'm going to switch to my bigger brush. And then I'm almost using the chisel edge to get some ripple strokes that look a little bit like water. The ripples in the water. Now I'm going to go to my phthalo, which is ultramarine is fine too. It's just a little darker blue. You can see it on my palette there. I'm going from the edges, and can you see I'm using the chisel edge of my brush, and I'm just kind of going into the center, lifting it up, I'm getting little strokes, it's looking like water already. These are a blast, these little canvases, you can paint them all sorts of ways. If you go back on my page, you will see some others I painted, they're so much fun and so quick. They also come on a black, the black canvas, which I find is nice to painting night scenes in So I've used that for little starry skies and things as well. And I do have a new program where I can text you when I go live so you know. Um, it's an app and let me move this over so you'll have the number. And if you would like, you can text me at that number. And if you opt in, I will send you a little notification when I go live. So you're welcome to join me there. And there, look at that already. Same thing on the big one. But I'm going to skip over to that big flat brush. And I'm going to go right into that dark blue. And I'm going to again go from the edge in. I'm, I can give it a little more pressure on my chisel edge on the edge here. But as I go, I am lifting up off of the canvas to get those nice thin lines, those nice thin waves. I'm going to mix a little white in there after two, and we're going to put a little bit more of a reflection in the middle as well, which is kind of nice. And I know you've seen me paint a lot of different landscapes and things, and you know I like to work fairly quickly, and the reason being is you can see how things are blending very nicely for us here. Taking just a little white on the chisel edge here now. Even though the canvas is white and white is showing through and that works for us, we still want to add the white paint. You don't want to leave the canvas without some paint on it. I always make sure I get some paint in there. My teal is a little wet still. My blue is a little wet. And now I'm almost blending it together, just using the white as a little vehicle to do that. I'm going to add a little bit on my tiny canvas too. Now you're always welcome to use a thin brush or a liner brush if you're more comfortable with your little lines, but do practice and play around with a nice chisel edge on a flat brush because it really is handy and I really do like um, painting with it a lot. All right, so pretty quick. We're gonna just do um, some reeds coming up on the bottom, but there's all sorts of ways you could you could add sand, you could put your palm, palm trees. I don't know if you saw me upside down painting with palm trees yesterday. It was kind of crazy. Um, so I'm trying a new little system here to see if I can't keep myself from being sideways all the time. All right, I'm going to take a little bit, and I may just, um, may just use my chisel edge. If I find it's too thick on this teeny guy, I will go to my liner brush, but I'm going to use a little bit of a light orange. Maybe that's why I got this out, but we could certainly have mixed our dark orange with some yellow and white and got the same shade. 
and it's just a very light peachy color and I want to just put a little bit of a highlight on the water here in the middle coming down. So you can see that. A little bit, it's very light. I'm gonna go lighter. Another thing I do when I paint is go from darks to lights a lot. And then the light really pop, pops if you have some dark behind it. So here we are again, just down the middle, kind of zigzaggy, not um, planned in any way, just random little lines. And now we're really gonna make it pop because I'm just taking the same brush adding a little white in the same area and just putting some little. And then this time, if you find your paint's really wet and your white's just blending in and it's not popping for you, you can certainly just let that dry or go back after and add a little more of a highlight. I want it to show up, so I'm putting it on a little heavier here. Reloading my brush after a few strokes because I'm picking up some of that wet paint underneath and it's not popping like I'd like. So if you need to, just pick up fresh paint when you need to. There, that's a little better. Get some little reflections in the water. This guy needs a little bit um, heavier paint. I'm going to take my liner real quick and just drop in a little bit of a better highlight. There, you can see that. Okay, that little moon setting sun setting. Gotta get my moons and my sun straight. Taking just some white paint and watering it down a little bit after your paint's been out a bit. Sometimes it won't flow nice and nice and smooth for you if it's been sitting out. It's um add a few drops of water and it will be more like ink and it would be nicer for you to paint with. And I'm just doing a little circle right down here. Now, you'll see it a little better on the larger one but I've got a little circle painted. A little white circle. Well it's off shape but we'll fix it. And now I'm just using the brush with just a little white that's left on it from before. And I'm going to just spiral it out a little bit. I want it to have kind of a rough edge, like a hazy edge around it. Oops, there we go. So you'll see it a little better when I do it now on this painting. So it's a little sunset, little sun, sort of towards the bottom, the middle of the canvas. I just make my circle. And I don't worry about the shape too much because when you go back now and do this little spiral around it, you're just going to spiral out and you get lighter and lighter and less pressure on your brush. And you have like a little halo, a little bit um, there. Super simple, super fast, super easy, really cute. And I finish up by doing some little reeds on the bottom. Now, it's in a silhouette, so I know you want to use black. I do use black, but I mix quite a bit of my blue with it. I, I shy away from using black a lot. I'll use a blue-gray or black mixed with my blue. I don't know why. I just, I just don't like the, the darkness of the black. I like to add a little blue to it, usually. I'm using the paint really watered down. I've got my dagger brush here, my liner brush, really watered so it will flow nice. And I'm just going to, sometimes when I want to use it, um, nice thin reed or nice thin lines, I pull them towards me. So I do have the canvas upside down, a little pressure, pull, and then lift right off the canvas. So that's how you get that thin line. Don't say, oh, I can't draw, I can't paint thin lines. Pressure on the canvas. If you have your, you know, your paint and you, you pressure and you do it and you end, of course you're not going to get a nice thin line, but watch. If you just press and then pull that brush off the canvas. Concentrate less on getting a nice thin line as to less pressure. Make it, make, push it down a little bit and then just up and out, up and out. You can get really, really super thin lines. You can even get them with the chisel, chisel edge of your square brush. So I go right across the bottom now. I make some taller, some, you know, not so tall. I do have them a little higher on the edge. You can put as few or as many as you like. You see that paint is flowing just like ink for me. So there we are. A little bit of, um, look at that there so you can see it. Thin my paint as I go. I don't want it to get too heavy. Again, I find it easier to pull the paint towards me. I've got a little smudge there, but no worries. So you just press your brush down and pull in up. And you can lean them. I sort of tend to lean these guys to the side a little bit. Get a little straighter in the middle. That's just my preference. You can do them any way you want. You are the boss of your painting. I am the boss of you. You can do it any way you wish. 
And I'm just going to kind of make it good little bit on the edges. Now, they're cool as they are as little reeds, but even more fun is to make them like those little grasses. So I take the edge of my little um, grasses and I make these, it looks like the wheat, you know, it looks like the... So I do that sort of thing on some of them. I don't do it on all of them. I do it on the more tall, the taller ones. And it's really just a little bit of a duplicate uh, brush stroke than what we're doing. Instead of pulling it long, we're making a little bit of a pressure and pulling it right off. Pressure and pulling it off. And you get a little leaf shape. I'll do that a little larger on my palette to show you. But for now, I'm just going to fill these guys in. Wherever you want them. As few or as many as you want. And maybe one here. So there, let's turn it right side up and you can kind of see how little, just little uh, wheat, I don't know what to call them, they look like just little bits of those wheat grasses. This guy almost looks fine as it is here. But if you want to, you can add a few of those on these little tiny guys. Press and pull. Doesn't need many. They show up nice on the lighter bit here, on the lighter part of the sunset. And um, there you go. Could they be any quicker and easier? And look at how adorable they are when you put it on the little easel, right? Look at this. How adorable. What a great little gift. You, you'd, of course, want to paint your edges and things, but pretty darn cute. Anyway, I wanted to pop on and show you the little sunsets. I also wanted to remind you that we do have another free class coming up at the end of the month. It is on the 28th at seven. It will be streamed right into the page here. It's going to be the dragonflies um, field. So it's going to be this painting here. This is a big 16 by 20, but you know how much fun it would be to paint it on a few of these little ones maybe. A real quick sky, um, done in there it's so simple and fun but so summery so we're doing this drag oh drag no we're not oh i'm sorry we're doing a different i did a demo of this one already we're doing a different dragonfly field oh my goodness anyways you can tell i really didn't plan this too well but check the page and i'll put the post up that one is on the page there's a free tutorial on that one which is so fun and it's also on my youtube channel so you could follow me on youtube tinker's cart art You'll see that painting there um, if you scroll through the page, but I will post a reminder about the class. So free class on the 28th of July. We are, oh, I've been painting like crazy. So let me just show you quickly some paintings I've just finished. I've got them for my private group. I've got some for free classes, some for paid classes, but I wanted to do some new things. So let me show you real quick. And you can let me know in the comments if what you think of the paintings. Um, and if you like them, or if you have any ideas for future paintings, I would love to see those as well. Hey, Lois. I'm just getting the comments in front of me now. And Linda, you guys are good. I'm just practicing kind of so that I can um, not be upside down all the time. So anyways, let me show you the new paintings. And so this is one. It's a Frida mermaid. You guys love Frida? What look I do? It's looking dark in the, in the picture there, but it's it's a little bit of a brighter green here. I don't know why it's showing so dark. But So this Frida, another mermaid in our mermaid series. I am doing some paintings from my illustrations. I do a lot of illustrating, and if you want to check those out, they are on my website, CherylHughesDesigns.com. And my favorite one is a manatee party. So this is one I just finished, and it's the manatee and the narwhal, which I love, and the octopus, which I love, and they're having a little tea party really a fun painting this one i showed those on the page you might not see this one this one i finished yesterday afternoon i think i might add something to it okay it's a teacup okay i know it's wonky but you know it's whimsical and fun but i think i wanna i dreamed of this last night i want to put a little design or a little something on the front of the teacup and if you're not a pastel person and i'm really not but i'm kind of into these teals and salmon orange and pinks lately you could change up the background color and same with the tablecloth and make this a completely different different painting. You could do it with a black background. It would be very rich. Hi, Michelle. Thank you. Hi, Amy. Thank you guys for popping on. Um, we we never have enough gnomes, right? So this is my, the beach is my second gnome. I don't know how that's coming up for you there, but the colors are looking weird on mine, and maybe they're not so much in yours. But gnomes at the beach. Oh, and 
Rocky the Raccoon having a little snack. So we haven't done much with fun little animals. We did the um, giraffe, and I've got the other series of whimsical animals with the glasses and the fun wreaths on their head, but he's just a little raccoon having a little snack. So, Oh, Linda, yeah, I'm glad. I haven't done too many florals lately. I took a fabulous photo of a hibiscus when I was in Florida last week that I'm going to do, but I, I did kind of spend a few days painting new things. Plus, there's plenty of old things. So there's so many paintings out there I'm excited to do with you guys. So um, thanks, Lois. Thank you, Mandy. Hey, you guys are good to watch. I hope this uh, came through okay. This is the first time I'm streaming like this. So I'm playing around with different technology to see what works for you guys. And thanks for joining me for these fun little sunsets. So easy. Any questions, you can always reach me. You can text me. You can comment on the page. I'll be here um, for whatever you need. Okay, thanks guys. Bye.